In the previous episode, we talked about data alignment and how you can improve performance of vector calculations by aligning and padding your arrays. In this episode, we'll look at the practical example of those procedures in the context of programming techniques for regularizing the vectorization pattern. To understand what it means to regularize vectorization pattern, take a look at this diagram. Suppose you have a loop in I that uses data in array A. Ideally, if this loop is going to be automatically vectorized, you want all iterations to use vector instructions. That means that first, the array must be on an aligned boundary, as we discussed in the previous episode. In addition, we want the number of iterations to be a multiple of the vector length. For example, in the Xeon Phi architecture, in single precision, the loop iterations count must be a multiple of 16. However, what happens if one of those conditions does not hold? Turns out, the vectorizer in Intel compilers can handle those situations. If your array does not begin on an aligned boundary, the compiler will implement a peel loop, which performs a few iterations at the beginning of the loop with scalar instructions or with the masked vector instructions. This is done to get to the first aligned element. After that, the code will proceed with vector instructions. If after that point your iteration count is not a multiple of vector length, for example 16, the compiler can implement a remainder loop, which again is performed using scalar instructions or with the masked vector instructions. Even though the compiler can produce correct results when you have irregular vectorization pattern with a peel loop and a remainder loop, the efficiency of calculations may suffer in this case. This is especially important for short loops, in which the overhead of the peel loop and the remainder loop may be significant. To improve performance in this case, we can regularize the vectorization pattern. To do that, we must pad the loop bounds and, if necessary, also pad the data structures, so that we begin the loop a little earlier than we have to, only to have the first iteration as a complete vector iteration. We may also need to pad the loop bounds and data structures at the end, so that the last iteration is a complete vector iteration as well. It may look like we are going to crunch more numbers in this case. However, by doing that, we will allow the compiler to use fewer instructions and improve the application performance. We will study the regularization of vectorization pattern using an example application that computes the LU decomposition of small metrics. 128 by 128 using the dual-till algorithm. LU decomposition represents a non-degenerate matrix A as a product of two matrices, L and U, where L is a lower triangular matrix and U is an upper triangular matrix. The dual-till algorithm is based on Gaussian elimination, so it contains three loops. One loop in B iterates through the rows of the matrix. Row B is used to eliminate elements under the main diagonal in all rows after it. Loop in I iterates through all rows below B. Finally, the innermost loop in J iterates through the columns in row I and B and eliminates the first element under the main diagonal in row I using row B. The resulting L and U are returned in the body of the matrix A. For more details, refer to the Colfax research publication zonefi.com slash papers slash LU. Where is the parallelism in this code? This code uses a single thread, and in our benchmark application we actually use multiple threads where each thread runs an independent instance of the function LU decomp. So we don't need to worry about thread parallelism here. What about data parallelism? We know that the compiler by default targets the innermost loop for vectorization, so loop in J will be vectorized. Let's take a closer look at this loop. J runs from B plus 1 to N. Let's assume that the matrix A is aligned to a 64-byte boundary and N is multiple of 16. Does it mean that the loop in J always begins on aligned data? Obviously not. For b equals 0, this loop begins at j equals 1, which is 4 bytes away from an aligned boundary. Similarly, for b equals 2, 3, and so on, the loop is unaligned. Finally, for b equals 15, the loop will begin on aligned data, but after that, again, the data will be unaligned. So, 15 times out of 16, we will have a peel loop here. 
this loop has irregular vectorization pattern, and we can get additional performance by regularizing it. To regularize this loop, we will pad the loop bounds. In this panel, we have the relevant lines of code before regularization. In this panel, we have regularized loop. As you can see, we introduced a new variable, jmean, which is the greatest integer, no greater than b, and also a multiple of 16. So we will begin the loop in j a little earlier than we have to according to the algorithm, however it will begin on an aligned boundary, so we will not have a peel loop. Of course we need to worry about correctness, because the extra iterations will overwrite some of the data computed earlier. To deal with this problem we introduced an additional storage container, matrix L, which allows us to separate the elements under the main diagonal in a separate array. We can see the performance effect of this optimization in this chart from the publication. We started here, and thanks to introducing jmean, we increased the performance on Xeon by 20% and on Xeon Phi by 30%. Now let's go back to the optimized code and see what else we can do with regularized vector loop. This is the code with regularized vectorization pattern. And here we additionally inserted two compiler hints. Pragma Vector Aligned and Pragma Evdep. Pragma Vector Aligned is a hint to the compiler that the loops and data are organized so that the loop always begins on aligned data and the peel loop is never needed. With this pragma, the compiler will not implement a check for alignment and it will not implement peel loops. As a result, the code will run faster. However, if we fail to supply vectorized code, we will have a runtime error. Note that it would be impossible to use this pragma before we regularized the loop using jmean. Pragma if dep is a hint to the compiler that there is no vector dependence in this loop. Because index-based references here are complex, the compiler may not be able to figure out if the address ranges in the left-hand side and in the right-hand side of line 9 are overlapping or not. With pragma if dep, we guarantee that they do not overlap, and so vectorization is safe. You can actually diagnose the need for such a pragma using the optimization report. When you compile the code, you may find the optimization report lines that say multiversion v1 and multiversion v2. This means that the compiler was not sure about pointer aliasing and implemented two versions of the code, one vectorized and the other scalar. When we use pragma if dep, in the optimization report multiversioning disappears. So there will be less code and one fewer checks at the beginning of the loop, and as a result performance will improve. You can see that pragma vector aligned and pragma if dep helps the performance on the Xeon Phi, improving it in total by 25%. On Xeon, performance drops with pragma vector aligned, which is surprising, but with pragma if dep it recovers to the level that we had before the hints. This problem is difficult to optimize, because the dual-till algorithm has a sequential character. You cannot start eliminating the elements in the middle of the matrix until you have eliminated the elements between the start and the middle of the matrix. So it is not surprising that Xeon Phi does not outperform the CPU. However, with additional work, namely memory traffic optimization, we can further improve performance both on the CPU and on Xeon Phi and the mic platform can get slightly ahead. We will not discuss this optimization in this video course, but you can refer to the paper xeonphi.com slash papers slash lu for more details. And if you want to see what it means to have 1x acceleration with xeonphi for cost efficiency and power efficiency, take a look at this publication, xeonphi.com slash papers slash 1x. Spoiler alert, 1x acceleration may often be enough. In the next episode, we'll continue talking about optimizing vectorization and discuss a programming technique that allows vectorization to happen when the compiler is not able to see vectorization opportunities. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below the video. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next episode.